What type of hustles was going on back then in your area? We <laughs> didn't do nothing really. All things really going on with us, we were grass cutters. That's <laughs> all the hustle they had. Because when too much of nothing popping, they wouldn't let nothing happen. Okay. What was people get? I mean, everybody got high. Was it getting high where you guys were? PCP, Angel Dust, POs, anything? You know what, to be real about it, it wasn't really that big then. You know, it wasn't really big at all then. Okay. You know, because uh, our thing was really number uh, that Silver Satin with Kool Aid. That was our thing. And that's where we got it from. <laughs> <laughs> that Silver Satin and Kool Aid. That was our thing. For the dime moves in the lows, for the six foes on spokes, on. for the OGs that did a dime, came back and ride on parole, for the homegirls with the scrap game, little homies that gang bang, from Pelican Bay to YA, rearrange your mind frame. Yeah, I know what you've been through. Uh, Shit, you had to go tend to. Your mama gave birth on the turf. I know them killers you can't do. This for the lost generation. Broke as hell, man. A lot of, you know, lifting weights and I was on swore they start calling me Big Miz. Original Stutterbox, Eastside Five, who's Pablo Bishop, Miss City Gangsta Bloods. Yeah, Mac, video, video, you know, this is for sure. For sure. Yeah, Mac, video, video, open your soul. This is for you. Cause this had a guy mad dog, he from the East Side Crypt too. That was my next door neighbor, man, he and my sisters go together. His name, real name is David, you know. Yeah, big old David, right there on uh, 118 Stamford Avenue. That and, we live. and he had a brother uh, that was real known. Uh, uh, Moto? Moto. Moto, my, oh, God, that's my boy. <laughs> Moto was my boy. Yeah. Mad Dog and Moto. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> How come people don't talk about Mo, uh, Mad Dog? That's why I say, I don't know, because, you know, that's one thing or another that's crazy. He should be out there, too, because Mad Dog was, man. <laughs> Mad, Mad Dog, Dog was a bro, big bro. dude. He was, he was big. Was he a bully? No, Mad Dog was just a humble man. Big old... God damn. And you had leadership qualities? Very much. You put a lot of knowledge in my head, man. Mm -hmm. God. Yeah, man, I, I was going to ask you about it. That got me. Oh. It slipped my mind. That got me there. Bad Dog and Moto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. A lot of people haven't heard about them, but I don't know why not. But you ever come down there on, on uh, 108th and uh, Stamford Avenue, that was, that was the spot. Mm hmm. No, oh, they were say right next door to each other. Mm. Was Moto pimping back then? <laughs> he was saw <clears throat> he was saw something like that. I won't say it. he killed himself as one. Okay, you he know. had he a lot was, of women. Man, he had women. Yeah, he got smooth character. You know, dressed nice, dressed very nice. Yeah. So all these dudes, well, most of these dudes we talking about, mm. Mad Dog, Matt Thomas, Tookie, they became weightlifters. Was you guys lifting weights where you was at? Man, we look at weights and keep on walking. I heard that. We got time for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. We used to go to the park, though, sometimes. they will be living at, <clears throat> I can't recall the name of that park, but it's right down here, around right Florence and uh, right before you get in Inglewood, they saw it be right there. Doing the Sentinella Park. Not Sentinella. No. No, nope. just the young it's just a No, just a little small little uh -huh. park. So they sit down here, off of Florence, and then you cross. It's a cemetery right down the street. Mm. Man, that's Sentinella Park. No, no not Sentinella. No. no, this is a little small little piece of park, a little bitty small thing. They say that they don't, they don't mention more to a mad dog at all. Because mm. I say like the bourgeois, I mean, a, lot, a lot of people don't mention nothing about them. And I've been trying to get in contact, but uh, trying to find out whether they still around or what. I could find out for you. Have you ever heard of Elgin Tremel? Elgin, Elgin, Elgin. I think he was tight with boot the bourgeois. Uh, probably might have been if he were, because I know Michael and Kenneth, and Sister Patricia. Mm -hmm. uh, we all went to 93rd Street School together. You know anything about A7 Gangsters? Eight seven gangsters. Mm. No. Nope. Green Meadows Park. That's the. They oh, is that right? I thought it was Avalon's over there. They cross the street. See, you know what I'm talking about now. That's right. Mm -hmm. Man, it's out here now. You know, you got family doing family. You got, you got a crib, you this crib, and that crib, and y'all jump. Mm. 
That's why it don't make sense. That's part of the reason why I want to educate on everybody. Back then, all y'all got along and was cool. Yeah, because there wasn't no beef or none of that stuff going on, right. you know? Go where you want to go, do what you want to do, and it's like, wow. Did you and your group of friends go out and have fun at like Rose Pan skating ring or anything like that? Basically, our thing was we waited on musical things, you know, from concerts or this and that. And they had a nightclub called the Blue Room over there on Avalon in 94, that's how big it was. That's all basically hang out. Mm. Things that we were basically into, really. Because a lot of people, a lot of them, you know, the thing they, they became they became pretty good names like Rose Royce. They grew up like on ninety eight and uh, and Wall. All the members from that group, we, we hung together too. Mm. You know. Wow. Was you uh, ever? Are you old enough that you visited the jazz festivals on Central Avenue? I went to like two of them, I believe. I think it was all like black two. people back then or mixed. It was uh, mostly black older cats, so mm -hmm. I went with my older brother before, you uh, know. That's off, off Central, you uh, know. Yeah, right about Real Rogers Park, I think it was. Where was you at during the 65 riots? Unfortunately, I was in Texas. Okay, you hadn't came out here. No. All right. Okay. When you guys move out here, it's after the 65 rise. What was the atmosphere like? The atmosphere, it was to me, coming from a little small city, Bryant, atmosphere, it was great because it was a whole big scenery for me, really. A whole big different experience because it was like, wow, everything is so, but everything's so close, you know. But it was a whole different thing for me, me being young and just, you know, I'm experiencing something new like this. I wasn't ready for the city. Really, basically, mm -hmm. you know, so I got out there and saw what it was all about, you know, but wow, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Coming from the country to the city, what was the biggest difference that you see? What was the biggest difference about that? You know, I really not give, haven't really gave up too much of thought about nothing because, uh, I really can't even put an answer to that because it's kind of okay. How did you guys get out here? Plane? You drove us? You drove us? Yeah. All right. Whoa. What happened to your father at this point? Pops? My boy, he was still there. He stayed you know? in Texas? Yeah, he, still, he was still in Texas, you know, when we left. But uh, he was getting to that age, you know. Eight kids, man, and uh, you know how most pops be back then. But well, they was. They raised their kids, one thing about it, but my older brother, for some reason, he wanted us out here with him. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. My father's from Texas. Oh, is that right? My grandmother from Texas. Mm -hmm. They was from Bastrop. From who? Bastrop, Texas. A little right. small city. They got yeah, a federal small. prison. A lot of people there. ain't heard of Brian before. Yeah. It was a small thing. Who's that in that picture right there, right here? My sisters, me, my two sisters, my brother, my uncle. Hmm. Like I saw a picture like that somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I kept looking at it like, wow. Mm -hmm. Well, well Clarence, man, I ain't got nothing else for you. I was hoping you had a good story yeah. any, about anything. Well, I'm glad you brought that mad dog and moto. That's some brothers, man. Dang. Hmm. Damn. It was just like yesterday. We used to hang with them, we used to stay on our head. They even the motto. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Any positive message to leave before you go? Well, our positive message to go out to everybody, we can come together and be more stronger, you know, because, you know, it's too much going on in this world right now. You know, there's hurting us, affecting us all family-wise and Everything, I wish they just get together and say, keep the peace, you know, really. God loves all, you know, we all just on the same earth together doing what's not supposed to be done, really. <laughs> not <laughs> that's supposed to be Not done. supposed to be, because, you know, <laughs> that's what's going on now, because this virus going on, everybody running on this and that, that's giving us a big message right there. We're losing loved ones on a daily basis, you know. Damn right, so Man, back to back. Need to be, you don't get a chance to reach out and tell you about I love you every day, so you know, need to come together on some stuff, really. 
That's the way I feel about it, basically. All right. Appreciate you, bro. I sure appreciate you, too. Yeah. Bye, man.